If you had one of these parts outside your house, then old Mrs Jones next door would definitely be very impressed because you'd probably think you won the lottery. It's very big, it's shiny, and it looks very expensive, but it's not really that expensive. It is a Yamaha 1100cc Dragstar, and on the road, this will cost you less than £6,500. And just about every big bike manufacturer now is making a custom cruiser. Yamaha themselves have a full range. This is a little 125cc Dragstar. Looks actually bigger than 125, and it's got quite a nice little presence on the road. This, brand new, is less than £3,000. Certainly their most popular cruiser though is the Virago and the 535 Virago was launched way back in 1988. Small and manageable enough for the novice rider, it sold in huge numbers. If 535cc isn't enough, then how about a 1300? This is the XVZ Royal Star, a liquid cooled V4 engine this time which is bigger than some family cars and it takes up nearly as much room on the road. The problem with big cruisers is their weight, and at over 300 kilograms, this Royal Star is almost as heavy as two new Honda Fireblades, so it's not exactly ideal for nipping down to the local shops and back. It is perfect though for posing, and you can enjoy many hours of relaxed riding in its luxurious padded seat. It doesn't feature in Yamaha's current lineup of cruisers, but it's been around since 1996 so there are still lots of very well cared for second-hand examples available from as little as £3,000. Bigger and heavier still is Honda's F6C or the Valkyrie. 1,520cc is the size of this flat six-cylinder motor which has been lifted straight out of a 1,500 Goldwing. It's not designed to be fast but it is very powerful. An impressive 96 foot-pounds of torque at just 5,000 RPM means you need to hold on pretty tight as the thing starts to accelerate towards its top speed, which is 120 miles an hour or so. Not fast for 1500 cc's, I'll agree, but that's not the idea of this style of bike. They're all about relaxed riding in supreme comfort. Kawasaki have enjoyed great success in the cruiser market with their popular VN range. And a few years ago, they decided to offer something slightly different with this, their Drifter. Available in 800 or 1500 cc versions, it's what you might call a retro cruiser. With looks not dissimilar to an old Indian motorcycle, it's designed to appeal to the rider who likes the cruiser image and style, but is perhaps not so keen on having to clean acres of chrome after every ride. A brand new 800 Drifter will cost you £6,000 and the 1500 cc is £8,300. Kawasaki's latest addition is the VN 1500 Mean Streak, a cruiser which they claim now has performance. Power is up 10% on previous VN 1500s, and with uprated brakes and suspension, it does handle surprisingly well for a machine of this size. It'll cost you £8,300. Engine sizes seem to be increasing year after year, and 2001 saw Honda launch their monstrous VTX 1800, a huge V-twin motor which kicks out acclaimed 108 brake horsepower. This is a big machine by anyone's standards, but although it tips the scales at 320 kilos, it's surprisingly easy to ride. A seat height of just 693 millimeters makes it easy to get both feet flat on the road, so load speed maneuvering is not such a problem. The price is 11,300 pounds. Now we can't talk about cruisers without of course mentioning that famous American bike maker which has been around for almost 100 years, Harley Davidson. It's fair to say that they're not the cheapest bikes in the world, but they do have a history and an image that some of the Japanese bike makers would die for. Something like this Harley Davidson Fat Boy will set you back a cool £13,000, but you can buy into the Harley lifestyle for much less than that. In fact, less than £5,000 will buy their base model 883 Sportster. And whilst it's not laden with chrome, doesn't have a huge padded seat and isn't particularly fast, the fact that it's got that famous name on the tank is more than enough for some people. But of course, once you've chosen and bought your custom cruiser, it doesn't finish there because then you'll need an open face helmet so that you can catch all the flies in your teeth and you'll need a pair of these. 